Hi everyone, I'm Christine. This is a pretty special little Easter egger and she has fully recovered from rye neck. Rye neck was something new for me, so I did some research and I followed whatever Professor Google told me to do and now she is all better. So let me tell you what we did to um, help understand what rye neck is and then to treat it. So first of all, to understand what rye neck is, um, what you're gonna look for is just a complete disorientation of their head. It reminds me of the episode of the Andrew Griffith Show where they caught a moonshiner and the rooster had gotten into the moonshine and he had what they called the blind stagger. So uh, this little chick definitely had the blind stagger, stagger and she looked super, super drunk. Her neck was twisted in such a way that she had her neck over her back and she was looking at me from the eyeball, not closest to me, but furthest away from me. She also had a ton of balance problems. Although she could move, her locomotion was completely backwards. Um, and she really had a hard time getting to her water. So I was super scared of it. Um, and immediately I separated her from the flock because until I knew it was Rhineck, I thought she had a neurological, something toxin going on, um, or perhaps something contagious. So Rhineck is actually not a disease. It is a symptom of something else that is going on. So when you think of Rhineck, think of it as you're not treating the symptom. Is that a cat or is that my hair? Oh, I felt something touch my shoulder and I thought it was something crawling up my arm. You need to think of it as a symptom um, and so you really want to get to um, the cause of what is causing the rye neck so that you can treat it properly. There are four things that can uh, lead to rye neck. One is a head injury. This is often really, really sad and head injuries often look a lot worse before they get better. So patience might be the name of the game if you know that your chicken had a head injury. The other thing is toxins. Sometimes when we are spraying our fields or dealing with um, other critters in our gardens and stuff, those toxins unfortunately can leak into their environment and make them sick. The other thing is that they could have a vitamin deficiency. And if that is the case, then I know exactly what to do because that was what our problem was. And then the last thing could be a sickness. There's actually several diseases that can lead to them having rye neck, and it's really, really important that you would separate them from the flock just in case it is. If you suspect that your bird has rye neck, there's a few things that I think you should do first. The very first thing is to separate that bird from the rest of, rest of the flock. Thank you, Andy. And uh, separating, separating them from the flock will do two things. First, you're going to prevent them from being trampled on because they are in a very compromised state. They have no balance. It's very hard for them to reach their food and water because they're so disoriented. Their head literally cannot look at where they're going and they will often walk backwards instead of walking forward. So just give them space. This is the curse of all my chicken videos, to have a howling rooster in the background. Uh, the second thing, it, by separating them, you are making sure that if this bird has rye neck because they are sick, that you are pro, um, the, you're being proactive in stopping a disease from spreading from bird to bird. If she had had Merix and then rye neck was a symptom of Merix, then what I'm doing is um, trying my best, although it's so contagious when one has it, it's most likely everybody's going to have it. Um, but I'm still going to take the chance to try to stop it from spreading to everybody. So definitely separate your bird. I'll wait for you. The second thing that you need to do is to manage their symptoms. Now, sometimes their balance is so bad that they're often on their side. I've seen this one when she was, um, when she was in the weeds, she often fell on her back. And so, um, sometimes when she was resting, I would prop her up in between her food bowl and the water bowl so that she wouldn't fall on her back. Their lungs are right here against their uh, backbone. And so when, they, when they're on their back, it's very difficult for them to breathe. Some people will toss their chicken upside down and uh, say, look, I can rock my bird to sleep. No, they just can't breathe and they're just slowly dying. So don't let them um, fall on their back. I've even see, seen, see, I've even seen people make like a hammock and like hang them in their coop so that they can still walk around, but that they stay upright. Um, that works really well if you've had bumblefoot, by the way, because bumblefoot is like a staph infection in their foot and it has to stay clean while it's drying. So um, a little, it reminds me of those Johnny jumpers of the kids that get in between the doorways. So cute. The third thing that you need to do is to find the root cause of, of, of where rye neck is coming from. I had a feeling that it was a vitamin deficiency. I did not see any other symptoms that made me think she had Merix or anything else was going on. Um, familiarizing your, yourself with a lot of the 
more common poultry diseases is going to help you just kind of like be able to lay eyes on them and say, oh, it's coccidiosis or oh no, it's Marix or oh, that's bumblefoot, I can treat that or um, infectious choreos. I mean, there's just, there's so many, but once you are familiar with it, you can kind of be like, man, I'm a vet now and I know everything. I had a feeling because she was so incredibly weak that it was a vitamin deficiency. So let's talk about the vitamin deficiency part of this because I, the biggest mistake I see with chicken owners is the food that you give your babies. One of the biggest mistakes I see chick owners doing is giving their chickens medicated chick food. Now it sounds like you're doing the right thing because it feels like, well, medicated, it must be very superior, they'll be so healthy. But the opposite is true. So medicated chick food has something in it that is going to starve the body of a very specific nutrient and that is thiamine, which is B1. Um, parasites such as coccidia um, thrive off of thiamine. And so medicated chick food or even a medicine like Corid starves the body of that particular nutrient so that the parasite dies. At the same time that you're treating, stop it. At the same time that you are treating for parasites, you are also completely depleting them of vitamins and nutrients, specifically thiamine. All of your B vitamins are for energy. And so when I saw the lack of energy, and she's so young, chicks are so active, I thought, this this doesn't look quite right but all i did was i started adding poultry cell this is made by rooster booster into their water so um, poultry cell has a wide range of vitamin and minerals in it and specifically it has selenium and vitamin b1 which is thiamine so when right neck is caused by a nutrient deficiency usually those two nutrients that are missing are thiamine and selenium and that they are both here in Rooster Booster. Um, the other thing you can do if you have it on hand, there's a goat paste uh, mineral that comes in this little tube and it just has selenium and B1 together. Very similar to how vitamin D is added into our milk to help us better absorb calcium. Selenium is going to help everybody, chickens included, absorb ah, the thiamine, the B1 much better. I know you're tired of being my model, but you're all better and I'm so proud of you. If you're dealing with rye neck, be prepared to wait and see some improvement for about six weeks. Um, so if you first notice that their neck is all turned around crazy, don't, don't panic. Um, there's probably a good solution for it. Um, and like in our situation, we actually saw improvement the very next And in our situation, we began to see improvement in her the very next day. I was just so relieved, but also a little bit shocked that um, simply by correcting her um, her vitamin intake that it turned itself around so quickly. But there's some people um, that really struggle with their animal, even bringing it inside, putting a little birdie diaper on it um, and waiting for six weeks or maybe even more to see improvement. So, um, all the little baby is under Scott's feet. This is so cute. That's Lennon's baby. Here's another thing that I would note. In the very, very hottest parts of summer, chickens will naturally eat a little bit less. They just have less of an appetite. During this time, it is very important that you are not supplementing their food with treats. I love to give my birds watermelon um, and sunflower seeds and sprouts and all kinds of things, but that is not a nutritionally complete meal for them. And you might see some nutritional de deficits like rye neck arise in your birds in those hot summer months because they got full off of watermelon. Watermelon is wonderful, but in the summer heat, if they fill up on watermelon, then that means they're not getting their um, complete and hearty meal. So just when it's over 95, we don't do any kind of um, supplemental snacks for them like sunflower seeds or watermelon or what have you. We just um, make sure that their water is cold. We make sure that they are drinking plenty of water and making it uh, enticing. So we can put watermelon in their water um, to make them come over to it. But I try very, very hard that I'm giving them a very dense, nutritious meal through the crumble that we're giving them. I know, don't fly away, I'm scared. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, the rooster is mean. This is how we treated Rhineck. I'm so glad it was a good outcome. Boy, we have been through it with chicken diseases. Um, so I'm really glad that this was a happy ending for this little girl. I do adore these birds. Their mama is a sultan and the daddy was an ice bar, a silver red blue. They will be absolutely beautiful. I don't think they think that they got their mama's crest, but I do think they got her coloring and they should lay, lay a mint blue egg when they um, are mature at about 15 to 20 weeks, we shall see. 
that's all for today's video. I hope that this helps you deal with Rhinec if you're dealing with it. It's one of the easiest things that we've had to treat. So good luck to you and don't panic. I promise it'll be okay. See you in the next video.